We have a lot to talk about uh, the Euro uh, ECB policy overall. Were you worried about Brexit? Well, we always thought it was going to be a saga, you know, up with ups and downs. Um, and also that there would be more uncertainty on the UK side than the EU side. Um, we thought that the EU will have a problem because there are 27 countries and to, to agreeing on a position, but that didn't uh, materialize. In fact, what's strange now is that on the UK, we're, we're uh, sort of there's some dissonance or disagreement uh, from one country. But, uh, which doesn't help at all. But, Minister, when you look at, I don't know whether you worry about, um, you know, a race to the bottom. We we're just talking with Eric Nielsen about the Italian elections, promises of a flat tax cut rate. So I guess if Brexit happens, certain economies may be juggling for a position. Where does it actually leave Malta? No, Malta is in a position of strength in the sense of um, doing well both on the economy side that's been growing over the last few years and uh, now, it's, in order to continue on its growth, it's, it's, it's relying on inputs, of, uh, inputs from, from the EU itself. In other words, inflow of, of the labour force, yeah. with which we can't grow at 6% or, or higher. Um, but, and also on the public finance, which we, through some reforms, um, we've managed to cut the deficit and now turned it into a surplus. So that helps. Um, but on the other hand, we're more observant that we're more pragmatic. Um, in a way, we're like the Germans in the sense we, we don't go for big visions uh, which we can't deliver. We're quite pragmatic. Our position on Greece and other issues is like that. We're, we're concerned with moral hazard, for example, yeah. the fact that countries have to be uh, on, a, on a level playing field before they start uh, talking about risk sharing. Um, Minister, Malta has gotten a lot of, of bad press lately, yeah, also because of the death so. of, of uh, the famous journalist uh -huh. that was looking into uh, affairs of the government. Uh -huh. What's your response? Do investors ask you about that? Are they concerned about the rule of law in Malta? Uh -huh. and, and, and how can you reassure them if you can? No, it's, Malta is, has had a very good record in terms of uh, regulation and, and its framework. So when you get bad news or you say, is, is this the Malta I know? And that's the kind of, of, of reactions we get. Um, but we need to address them and what, that's what we're doing. For example, on governance issue, we're just saying it's not on the press. They, they have every right to say what they like. And obviously there is an infighting there between two strong parties in Malta, which really opened up and made certain, you know, tabloid sort of statements being made. Although. I must say there were some some uh, developments, unfortunately, which didn't help. But we're addressing. We've got internal evaluation on anti-money laundering uh, being done. We've got a plan. We did the risk assessment, so for all to see, it will be announced soon. And and especially any weaknesses, especially of coordination between, say, the police, the FIU, and also the uh, MFSA and the central bank. All together, they need to get the action. We're setting up a, a, um, a national coordinating committee now right. um, to start working seriously. So our, we, we want to, you know, correct any uh, bad impression. Of course, if it, if it spills over into a question of taxation, that's another issue. We always wanted to distinguish between um, competitiveness and also between um, uh, tax avoidance and tax evasion which we don't condone. <clears throat> so we've cooperated with the uh, with ECOFIN. Uh, we didn't veto anything, um, where we've passed through important directives. Now it's a question of implementing them in the year and a half to come. Minister, wonderful to speak to you today. To most Americans, Malta is something out of an Aubrey and Matterin novel of Patrick O'Brien with uh, uh, the, the drinking of a good bottle of port off the deck before the next uh, Napoleonic War extravaganza. That's got nothing to do with the reality. What do you need from Europe and what do you need from Germany to keep Malta, Malta? Your major issue is foreigners want to move to Malta how are you going to keep Malta, Malta? Well, Malta is a question of exploiting its strategic location. And it's not a question of war or anything of the sort. That's, that's, that's history. It's uh, close to the North Africa and the Middle East. It's the most southern European country where English language is an official language. And therefore, for business, it's, it's quite important. Um, that's why it's, it's attractiveness. Also, it has uh, its own mother tongue, which is Semitic. 
and that brings uh, sort of Jordanian investment and other investment. Uh, they feel qu quite at home in Malta, although it's Christian and European, but at the same time it has got a Semitic language, which, um, uh, you know, people from North Africa and, 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 and the Arab world are, um, you know, they feel they're, they're at home. Um, minister, talk to me about, uh, there's, there's a Euro Area Finance Minister vote on yeah. February 19th about who will be the Vice President of the ECB. Two candidates, Spain and Ireland, who will you vote for? Well, that's the, polit the European politics of it. Of it. Um, votes deserve that post, but however, the EPP, um, and Louis Guindos uh, was from the EPP, worked very hard um, for the socialists to keep that place. Yep. And uh, for our group, which is the Labour Party, and, and it's in that group, he did, he did uh, quite a good job. So it's probably um, the socialists would look kindly to his uh, nomination and probably so Louis Windows will get it. 